Here's how fear forced Minister Foss to betray his allies. Reference Master of Swords Chapter 1. We meet Foss for the first time. He's a short, well-dressed noble with enough confidence to speak to the king's brother unprompted, indicating his influence. In his first scene, he shows his cunning by successfully instigating Julius to kill Griffith. Griffith was awarded the title of Count! He pays three maidwomen to swoon loudly over Griffith and trash talk the nobles in a place where he knew Julius would walk by. He waits for Julius to shout at them and uses the noise as an excuse to converse with Julius. Foss reveals to Julius that his white dragon knights have been replaced by the Band of the Hawk as the king's guard for the annual fox hunt, further enraging Julius. Foss suggests that the cure for a case of cocky commoner is a sneaky poison arrow. Julius loves the idea and embraces it as his own, taking on all risk. As Julius leaves, Foss flashes his patented slimy grin, masterfully done. Foss thinks he's won, but he couldn't be more wrong. Fast forward four chapters and Foss holds a much different expression. The once confident minister Foss submits to Griffith in terror. How can a man change so much in just 100 pages? After Foss set Julius on Griffith, Julius fails because Griffith is a core character. Griffith finds out that Julius called the hit on him, so he sips his tea and summons Exodia. Now we all know that Guts doesn't miss, so Julius and Adonis get deaded with the swiftness. Foss finds out, but he isn't too worried. Back to the drawing board. This time he get it right. He drafts a group of high-level haters to help him to poison Griffith at the victory ball. Foss knew beforehand that the nobles were all nuts and no shaft, so he would need something extra to get them on board. Fresh from the streets comes the Queen of Midland. You heard that right. And not only is she in on the plot, she's leading it. Foss managed to recruit the second highest authority in Midland next to the king in a plot to take down Griffith, mitigating his own risk. How? You see, Foss's spies informed him that Julius, RIP, was having an affair with the queen. Yes, he was mashing his older brother's wife. Julius may have been a dick, but the queen loved him because he did to her what her husband wouldn't. Had sex with her. Side note, in the 1997 anime, they make protecting the royal bloodline her sole reason for wanting Griffith dead, as she noted that Charlotte loved him, but the manga provides an extra motive. Opinions about their affair aside, this was insanely important information. So when the queen heard about Julius' assassination, she was tight. Foss used this connection to manipulate her for his bidding. He told her that Griffith killed Julius, even though he had no hard evidence to prove his claim. Already wanting to keep Griffith away from Charlotte, she ran with it and took charge of the plot. I'm seeing a pattern here. Emotionally charged person enthusiastically does Foss's bidding for him. Note to self, in moments of emotional distress, be wary of those who seek to process your emotions for you. Minister Foss was an expert at taking advantage of emotional people. He did it with Julius, the Queen, and the Hater Gang. EQ was off the charts. Anyways... Griffith snips out the plot, we'll get to how he did it later, and blackmails Foss by kidnapping his young daughter. Foss, forced to cooperate, schemes with Griffith to swap out the poison for a drug that would put the consumer in a near-death state. Griffith slips the lean and passes out. The plotters rejoice and rent out Rapunzel's loft for a post-hit party. They shower Foss with praise, but Foss looks nervous and the queen calls him out on it. He gaslights her presents a weak excuse to leave, locks the doors behind him and sets the building on fire. The queen smells smoke and panics. Two nobles bust open the locked door and get singed by the fire. The surviving schemers rush to the balcony and catch a live Griffith glaring at them from safety. He takes off his hair tie and releases his inner psycho. A noble begs for his life and tries to throw the queen under the bus, but Griffith doesn't flinch. Side note, as much as I didn't like her character, I respect the queen for keeping a gangster into her death. She didn't beg for her life once. Griffith leaves the plotters to die and walks to meet Minister Foss. Foss stands trembling behind a fountain, out of the view of his burning co-conspirators. Now, here's where things get interesting. Foss asks Griffith how he knew about their plot, and Griffith explains. Reference departure from the front. After Guts ended Julius and Adonis, Foss finds Griffith as he readies himself to fight the Tudors. Suspecting Griffith, Foss mentions the recent assassination, but Griffith does not flinch. 
This makes Foss doubt himself. They part ways and Foss reflects on their interaction. He wonders if Griffith knows that he encouraged Julius to kill him at the fox hunt. A cold shiver runs down his spine and he turns to see Griffith staring him down from the end of the hall. Foss all but shits himself and Griffith notices. Griffith explains why this interaction was the basis for his understanding that Foss wanted him dead. Griffith tells Foss that in that hallway, his eyes betrayed his fear. Quote, when a man is faced with something he truly fears, he cannot ignore it. He has only two options. He can become subordinate and fall under its wing, or he can strike it out and erase the fear. From that moment, Griffith knew that Foss would never permit his existence. Foss submits to Griffith and Griffith smiles and returns his daughter. Cheese on bread. Where do I begin? Let's start with this. I do not believe that Foss is scared of Griffith per se. He is scared of Griffith's philosophy. Griffith wants a kingdom, but he isn't the only one. He has competition that he needs to defeat by any means. Normal people can't do this because the guilt and stress would rip them apart. A man that wants power needs a philosophical structure that permits them to conquer and kill their enemy while maintaining their sanity. This is a requirement for a would-be king. And in this scene, Griffith shares a snippet of his doctrine. Men that fear him may either join him or die by him. That's how seriously Griffith takes his pursuit. Foss is frightened, as he should be, because he understands that Griffith can murder him and sleep soundly, embracing all the guilt and negative emotion, knowing his actions were all in service of his ambition. Foss wanted power. He was smart and socially aware, influencing key figures in Midland with relative ease. I can imagine that he would have had a better chance at power in Midland than most others. Yet, when confronted with the philosophical framework that Griffith embraces as a means to achieve his dream, all he felt was fear, knowing that death or submission were the only options presented to any man who dared to play games with him. In a moment, Foss was forced to come to terms with his inferior resolve, a crushing moment for any confident man with ambition. I'll leave you all with this. For those who seek the throne, they need a philosophy that protects their mental health. How does a man that thrives for power need to think for him to get what he wants. Like and subscribe for more content and comment down below. I reply to every comment, seriously. Also, I just hit 400 subs. Woo! Thank you for all the support and have a blessed day. Peace.